that we have a lot of new blood coming in. The, the God is sending in all these new souls, all these new saints. And the thing that they run into, the thing that God sends them here, and then we have to create an atmosphere to keep them here. <laughs> We have to create an atmosphere to keep them here. See, when you have a young, vibrant, beautiful husband and wife family like the Sluters, you got to make sure because they, they came here looking for something real. If you don't know Tony, if you haven't spent any time talking to Tony, Tony's about as real as it gets. <laughs> She's about as real as it gets. And let it be, you know, on the sneak tip, Troy, cool. <laughs> Y'all man, Troy is a cool dude, man. Troy is a, he's a fountain of information. I found that out just by, you, you talk to Troy, you found out he's got a very, very experienced background. I didn't know he ran collegiate track. I didn't know, I mean, he, this is a, and he's a man amongst men because of the, the faith move they made. This is how you know they're a special family, a special husband and wife team. They got here, they've only been here, what, a few months? They latched onto a word and stepped out and launched and cast their net and end up getting a home now now those of us that have been here for a while and have heard word and we you know we're working towards it and all that type of stuff but they immediately anytime you you know the power of God is in a place when new people come in and immediately latch on to the word that's being brought forth and then they immediately jump and boom they receive the blessing they, that, that's so when we have that, when we have, when we have what's going on right now, God is doing something crazy right now. We're bringing in all these strong men of God. Tony just walked in. We got Ramon and, uh, and uh, Lisa Omar, Dr. Omar, I should say, I'm sorry, Ramon, Dr. Omar. Um, they're a strong couple. We have all these strong family units. Look what God is setting up. All these strong marriages in the house of God. So when new people show up, they have no choice but to fall in line with the principle that's already established here in the house of God. We are all about marriage. Marriage is honorable. Hebrews 13 and 4, marriage is honorable in the bed undefiled. So anytime we have new souls that come into this house of God, the thing they run into is they run into the power of God and they run into principle. A man comes here, he finds a wife, he chooses himself, a soulmate. He doesn't play, he doesn't look around, he doesn't start dating half the chicks in the church. He doesn't sit there and look at who's got the biggest booty. I'll talk to her first, then let me talk to the one that's got the biggest breast first. No, he knows what he's looking for. He has to fall in line with the principle that's already set up here in the house of God. He has to. He has to. Live and prove. Tony did it. <laughs> you know, we, we, so, some of our other, some of the uh, Kenny and Trajan, a young couple, they did it. Even though they've been here and they grew up, but they immediately moved on it. But, when you have a house of God like this where principle, word, Holy Ghost, faith, all the things, everything that we're, baptism in Jesus' name, all the principle that we have coming forth, you know, the thing that can kill it is when the atmosphere ain't right. When the atmosphere ain't right. You know, we can have all these powerful couples. We got TQ and Lavelle in the back. We got Tony and Dr. Reynolds right here. We've got Troy and uh, Tony right there. We've got these guys. We've got those guys. We've got me and my wife. We can have all the, but you know what? If we're not operating in our power and we're just off secluded, off in our little, sec, uh, our little section, don't nobody know that there's any light there. Don't nobody know, no, can, nobody can get the full unction of the power that's supposed to be in this place. Do you know what I mean? You're basically, in other words, you can be Holy Ghost filled as a couple. You can be Holy Ghost filled. You can come to the sanctuary and you can have the mindset, you know what, I'm just, we're just going to do our business. We're just going to come, hear a word, mind our business and go back home. And you don't want to congregate. You don't want to, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to hang out with your brother and sister. You don't want to spend time. You don't want to love one another. You don't want to develop relationships. You don't want to let people know you're praying for them. You don't want to greet people. You don't want to, you know, inter intercede for one another. When you don't do that, I could be Holy Ghost filled. But if I'm not praying for Tony, what good does it do, Troy? When a new person, like this young lady here, I don't know your name. What's your name, sweetheart? Amanda. Amanda. Hi, Amanda. She just, hi, hi. When Amanda comes in, we want her to walk into the power. We want her to walk into the power. She can't do that if we've got couples not getting along. She can't do that if we've got people not talking to one another. She can't do that if we have people that have attitudes with one another or arts against one another. That blocks the power, y'all. You could be a power, you know, you could have a Duracell battery, you could have a power source, but if it ain't plugged up, it does no good. It's just a, it's basically just a paperweight. 
And that's the thing that we're working when, when she said that, I am love, I am not hatred. We have to keep continually, continually create an atmosphere of love in the sanctuary. And we have to continually make sure that we are raising up husbands and wives, young priests, young priests that are, that are about action, young priests that are about family, young priests that can choose a wife, can bring their wives into the sanctuary. We have to make sure that we're always fostering that type of environment where we're creating that type of thing. Get Proverbs 5 and verse 18. Is that what I wrote down? Yes. I got it right. Yay. Get Proverbs 5 and verse 18. Berdina's not here. She's never here when I need her. Um, yeah, Tony, you loud. Let go. So, uh, <laughs> besides, it's doing so good to hear a strong man's voice reading. A strong man, a man of God that picked a wife <laughs> and has been walking and moving in blessings ever since. So it's, it'd be good to... <laughs> Proverbs 5, verse 15. I'm sorry, verse 18. Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. People, young men, those of y'all that... Hey, Austin, what's up, man? The, the, the young men that are here, the young men that are coming in... Uh, Wilbur, uh, Davion, you want to rejoice with the wife of in the, uh, the, the rejoice with the wife of thy youth. In other words, as a young man, you don't want to wait. You don't want to be coming. You never want to come to a house of God. You never want to come to a sanctuary where they make it sound like marriage and 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 you know holiness is on the back burner, where you can kind of take your time picking a wife, where you can kind of take your time, you know, let me look around, <laughs> where you can kind of take your time doing your thing, where you can't make a selection. You know, any real man of God, any man is a man of action. He's a man of action, so he moves. So the minute a man, so once you understand the truth, once you come in here and you hear truth, when we hear truth, when we hear a word, it's now our duty. It's now our duty because the man of God has done his work. Believe it or not, when he goes out to eat with us, me included, when he goes out to eat with us, when he counsels us in his office, when he talks to you before he's getting in his car to ride off, you know, that's extra. You know, he's already done his work when he brought the word. He already did what he was supposed to do when he brought principle. When he told you the truth, when he told you that shacking and screwing outside of wedlock and, and all that type and drinking all that type of stuff, that's ungodliness, that's sin, that does not please God, and that you need to be a man of God, a woman of God. You need to be baptized in Jesus' name. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You need to seek, you need to be trying to live the abundant life in Christ Jesus as a family. When he tells you all that, it is your job to then out operate in it we have to we have to we have to take that and run with it and though and some of us sometimes you know you know all sorts of little excuses all sorts of little things come up where you know you're kind of like you know you're kind of lackadaisical in how you apply the word but it is your job as a man as a man especially for our young man it's your job when you hear truth you run with it you immediately apply it. Never sit someplace where you feel like it's okay to be status quo, where you can take your time making a selection. Not in this church. Not in this church. Not in this church. First of all, as a young man, you have to be a man of action, which means you have to be a man of faith. You don't, you don't, even, you don't, you don't even step to nobody if you don't have some criteria in place. Because for you to lead somebody into the sanctuary as a husband, you got to already have some things lined up. You have to be a man of action, which means you're taking care of business. There's some things that I'm getting, I'm getting in order. There's some things that you, have, you just have to have. You have to be a man of faith. You have to be a man of prayer. You have to have the Holy Ghost. There's some things you just got to get done. There's some things you just have to get done. You can't take your time about it. Because for you to lead your family, they, fo they follow your flow. They follow your flow. They do what you do. So if you're lackadaisical, she'll be lackadaisical. She being the wife. If you're lackadaisical in your decision making, then you're going to have indecision in your household. If you've got indecision in your household, you are not reaping all the blessings and the benefits that you can be reaping. You're not. I'm just being honest, and I'm talking to me too. If there's indecision, if you're, you, you, you have to, you know, when it comes down to it, you have to be able to pull that faith trigger. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if faith comes by hearing, you have to be in the house of God as a young man. You have to be here hearing a word. You have to know what to look for in a wife. You're not going to learn that in a club. You're not going to learn that outside the sanctuary. The only way you even know what, what makes a virtuous woman, what would make a good wife, I have to come and hear. 
And if I'm not doing that, if I'm not doing that, if I'm distracted, if I put that on the back burner, if I think that that's secondary to having swag or whatever the case may be, you're not ready for no wife. You're not ready to be a husband. You're really not even ready to be a man yet. I'm telling you, man, look, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I'm just, whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever. I'm talking to me too, man. You're not even really ready to be a man yet because you're not a man of action. A man applies something instantly. Instant. When he hears something, he applies it. He's a good example. Bishop tells him something one time and I've seen him apply it instantly. Because of the strides that this man of God made, that's what made this woman of God shoot. That's what made her say, okay, yeah, that's a man of God that I want to be with. You understand that? Indecision. Indecision. Lackadaisicalness. Indecision. A woman cannot follow that. A woman cannot follow that. You can't make up your mind. You can't decide whether or not you want to be in the street or in the sanctuary. You are not ready to be a priest. You are not ready to be a priest. You can't make up your mind whether or not you want to go to the club or hear a word, hear something that's going to help you edify your family and lift your family up to the next level. You are not ready. You're not ready. You're not where you think you are. You can take the hat off. That swag is not there. <laughs> You're not where you thought you were. You, are, you have to listen. You have to have an ear to listen. Psalms 37 and 23 says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord, which means you have to be in contact with the Lord. You have to be hearing a word to even have your steps ordered. You got to be in contact, not not in not not, you know, not di long distance contact. I mean, an individual relationship, which means you have to be a man of prayer. I'm just going to talk to the priest for a minute. We have to be men of prayer. We cannot be men of talk. We have to be men of prayer and men of action. Because to make some things happen, you know, there's just some, Troy, tell me if I'm lying. There's just some obstacles that we as priests, we're just going to run into, whether you say something or not. Whether you open your mouth or not, there's some obstacles that's going to block you simply for the fact that you're trying to do something right, you're trying to do something holy. Who else in your family has tried to be a husband and tried to raise a family and didn't abandon the family the first minute trouble, the first sign of trouble? Who else has ever done that? Of course you're going to run into some obstacles. Of course you're going to run into some problems. That's just built in. But you have to be a man of prayer to find, you have to be a man of prayer and you have to be a man that can take instruction. You have to be able to take instruction. Not just take the instruction, apply it once you take it. Then, once, and, and here's the thing, because remember something, men, they watch, they being the wives, or prospective wives, or well, your sure, whatever you want to call it, they watch what you do and stop listening to what you say. They watch what you do and they stop listening to what you say. And that's based on how you're moving. See, it's one thing, wow, okay, it's one thing, See, if she's used to hearing you pray, man, see, if she knows that you have a, because see, if she knows that you have a prayer life, she knows that you're talking to God, see, she ain't, she's not concerned, because she knows, and eventually, you know, whether, whether he's telling me every single thing that he's thinking right now or not, I know he's a man of prayer. I know he's going to come to me with a plan and say, okay, baby, this is what we're going to do. This is what God gave me. Here's how we're going to get out of this. Here's how we're going to get to this. If you ain't got a prayer life, and you got her just sitting there whistling and waiting in the Dixie like <laughs> the respect level drops. The respect level drops. The, the admiration, whatever, you, whatever she thought you had when y'all first started uh, courting or dating or whatever, collecting data, it all starts dropping. Whether she says it or not, it starts dropping. It starts dropping. It'd be, I, we're not talking about people. Remember, there's a difference between getting hit and staying hit. Here's an example. Stand up. Stand up. He was a general when he came, okay? He was a general when he came. He was already a general. He didn't become a general. He didn't put on general bars or, or the general, you know, general where was, they were uh, stars. He didn't put on the general stars after he got here. He already, that's something he brought to the table. When Sheena, Dr. Reynolds saw him, she already saw the stars on his shoulder, now, you know, if you know anything about military rank, you know, there's different levels of, of different level, levers, uh, levels of general. You know, there's four stars and three stars, a brigadier and a lieutenant general, right? Am I right, Nate? 
okay? He might have been a brigadier general when she first met him, which means he had one star. But nonetheless, he had a star. He came to the table with that. That's what, that's God given. That's what God gave him. You, follow me, man. You came to the table with something. She saw the instant spark in you. Now, she decides that she's going to put her name with this man. She's going to be Mrs. Reynolds because he's a general. With me, all he's going to do is become a four-star, or better yet, he's going to become chief of staff. Yes, sir. He'll go from wearing stars to end up in a suit. And now he's making the, he, no, we will invade. <laughs> now he's making those decisions. We will invade. No, we'll retreat. Bring our troops out. He's making those type of decisions. All I'm going to do is enhance what God already gave him. I'm going to enhance what God already gave him, what he already has in him. But if you don't already have that, let me back up. Now, there's a problem if she saw him with his star already, and then she gets married, and now he's reduced down to a major. If you know anything about military, yeah, that's a big jump, ain't it, Nate? That's four ranks, which is very, as far as military go, that's a big, man, if you drop four ranks, dog, you... <laughs> I mean, that's, that's hard. Usually it's one or two ranks. Yeah, you, pretty much. It's, it's a wrap. He really got a problem if he's no longer even an officer. Now he's enlisted. He's a sergeant. You know, your thinking can take you from being a priest in her eyes to a private or a sergeant. Where you were a general. Where you were a general. When she met you, you were talking faith. You were talking big dreams. You already came with an inherent gift. You came with something God gave you. She didn't give you that. You didn't get that because you met her. You came with this. See why you got to have a relationship with God already so you know what gifts you already come to the table with? So you, you're, you're in tune with what God wants you to do? You know who you are? He showed up as a general. He goes down to sergeant. We've got a big problem. We got a big problem. And you can't blame her. It ain't her fault. How do you process? Wait, what are you doing now? Because I'm following your lead. I was following the general. I was in line and in, in step and in march with the general. She was in step with whatever you were doing, priest. When did you forget who you were? When did you forget that you called the shots? When did you have a lack of faith? What did it? Was it that bolo shot that you took to the gut? Remember the example the bishop gave on Sunday. It's not getting hit. It's coming back. It's staying in the middle of the ring. Better yet, I take it even a step further than that. You know, you can get hit so hard. Whatever you aren't, that's what's left there. I can be in the middle of the ring. You can be paying ties. You can be paying bills. You could be looking at property. You can be stretching out on God, on, you know, stretching out on faith for different things. And then you get hit. I can talk. I got hit. You can get hit. And if you, if it's not already in you if, you, if I wasn't a fighter, if I wasn't already a general when I got hit, whatever I am, if I was just posing, if I acted like I had a work ethic, if I acted like I was about some business acumen, if I acted like I was about some faith, if I just said what I thought I needed to say <laughs> to get her, if I tried to morph into whatever I thought it would take to pull that, when I get hit, whatever I am, that's what's left there. If I'm a fraud, if I'm not a real fighter, you know what I'm talking about. If I'm not a real fighter and I get cracked, then grow, I'm running. Because I'm not a real fighter. I'm not really a man of prayer. So ladies, you do your research. Because you don't want a dude that when he gets hit, he runs. And if you just look at the exterior, and you don't do your data collection, if you don't ask the questions that your man of God has been teaching you to ask, you're going to get fooled by the okie doke. You're going to get fooled by the okie doke. You'll, you'll get a good looking brother who is weak. You'll get a good looking brother that the minute somebody, it looks like he's going to get hit. Oh God, no, 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 no. He'll, he'll run before the punch is thrown. Better yet, I don't know if I should fight him. He's strong. I don't know about that house. It looks like a, that's a big bill. I don't know about that. I don't know. Uh, property. <sighs> well, I don't know about children. Oh, you, you didn't say you wanted baby. What do you mean she didn't? Who gets married and don't want kids? Fool. What? So you going to run? 
If that's not if that's not what's in you, you will run. You will backpedal. You, the thought of a fight will make you take off. But the converse, if he's really a general, if he's really a fighter, and he gets stuck and he gets hit, ladies, he might stumble. He might get knocked down to a knee and take what they call a standing eight count. But he's going to stay in that ring. He'll finish the fight. He's going to finish the fight. That's what you look for. That's what you look for in data collection. Does he have enough intestinal fortitude? Forget that. Does he have enough faith? Does he have enough God to withstand a vicious body shot? Because if he doesn't, it doesn't matter how good he looks and how good I look, this is going to fall apart when we face a Tyson. This is going to fall apart when we face something. He, he's going to run. Remember, we're not docking this general. We're not docking this man of God. We're not docking this priest to be or this priest that's already in his place. We're not docking him for getting hit and getting knocked down. That's everybody. We're not docking him for getting knocked down. We're docking him if he, if he does a Michael Spinks. He shows up in the ring and he don't want none. Some of us, some of you young ladies have had men in your life or have men in your life right now that don't want none. They don't want none. They don't want no responsibility. They don't want none of that. They don't want none. They don't want none. They don't want no Holy Ghost. What you talking about Holy Ghost? What you talking about prayer hour? What you talking about fasting and stepping out on faith and believing God? What you talking about casting a net? A hair net? I need a hair net. <laughs> you, you don't even know what you talking about. He has no clue. The thought of faith frightens him. The thought of being knocked down and having to collect his thoughts and get himself together because my family's watching. I can't be sitting here with my teeth out. Let me find my mouthpiece and get right back into the middle of the ring because I'm still a general. I'm still a general. See, man, she still has, she has to see the same thing in you she saw when she married you. She has to see the same thing. If the light goes out, that's your fault. If the light goes out, she has to see a general. If Dr. Reynolds looks over, she sees a sergeant. <laughs> if Tony looks over and Troy is not, if, now he's Roy because he took the T out. It was too big of a letter. <laughs> if Lisa looks over and Dr. Omar has become nursing assistant, uh, nursing assistant Ramon, we've got an issue. We've got an issue. So men, it's, in, it's, in, it's imperative to us. We have to increase, as Romans 1 talks about, faith to faith. We have to go faith to faith. The only way to do that is to be in here hearing a word. Then, then when you're doing that, you can, you can lead. You can lead. Your family will follow you. Here's another thing she has to know. Because remember, it's, you know, it's, it's hard to see some things on first appearances. Here's another thing. You have to have had a track record of trusting God. You've had to have a track record. It has to be, can I see? Well, we're going to just improvise. No, we'll improvise. It has to have been a track. She has to be able to look. You know, I hate to see, I, you know, I hate for a lady to say, let me see your resume. <laughs> let me see what you're really about. Let, let me see your resume. Let me see your work history. Let me see what's really on there. Let me see, what, let me see who you really are behind the muscle or behind the, the smooth cut or behind the whatever. Let me see. I, let me check your references. Let me check your Who else can vouch for you ever standing for something? Who else can vouch for you ever being tested? Who can vouch for you being under pressure and not screwing everything sw switching past you? <laughs> See, you need to understand, man. You need to understand your charisma. Remember, you were a general when you showed up. You, were, you already had, that was, inherent, that was an inherent gift God gave you. You were a general when you showed up. So just because of you being a general, you know, sometimes, you know, when, it was in, when I was in the military, there were girls that were just glossed over at the thought of power. Charisma, power, all of that type of stuff just made their eyes gloss over. And so they just wanted to be around somebody with influence, somebody with power. Men, you're going to have that at your disposal on a, on a consistent basis. On a consistent basis. Who has, who has ever had a record of you being a man of faith or principle when you've had your pick of the litter with young ladies who didn't have any data, who didn't know who they were, had no knowledge? Who can speak on your behalf? Who's seen you take a stand? 
Who's seen you take a stand against your family? Or are you a mama's boy? You can't check your sister when she has something to say sideways about your marriage? You can't check your cousin? You scurry up under your mother's skirt when they got something to say about your prospective mate? Really? You're that dude? Take those off, dog. You ain't no general. You're private. Take them off. I need all of those. Get those off your shoulder. You ain't no general. Take those off. You ain't no general. You mean you can't stand for me in the heat of battle? That's a clear telltale sign, fellas. What you do in duress is a clear telltale sign. A clear telltale sign. Okay, so you're down. So you lost this job. So we lost that. So you don't want to pray no more? You don't believe God no more? We're not going to early morning. Hey, I can talk, man. I've been here and I was dazed and knocked. Hey, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I was out of it. <laughs> out of it. Out of it. Wondering, man, God, I, you know, because I was expecting God to come this way. I was expecting this to happen. See, what do you do when disappointment hits you? Who are you when disappointment hits? It really doesn't matter who you are right now. It doesn't matter with me standing up here. Nothing's hitting me. I'm standing up here. Nobody, nobody's hitting me. Even in football, it doesn't matter what any. That's what I'm trying to tell, teach Chris. It doesn't matter what anybody's doing right now because I mean, if, if, you know, if there's nobody pressing you, it really doesn't matter. You've got freedom to run because there's nobody pressing you. There's no corner right there on you trying to jam you off the line. And that guy, that defensive back who's trying to jam you off the line, he's in this position. He just wants to get one shot. The enemy only wants to get one shot at your faith. He only get, wants to get one hand on your confidence. He wants to get one hand on the thing that you are believing God for. Because, see, when a defensive back in football, when he gets one hand on the receiver, he's really just trying to knock him off, off route. You know, you, you know, passing routes are all timing, right? They're, they're all timing. You know, you got to be at a certain place at a certain time. Ooh, how many times have you missed being where you were supposed to be because you got knocked off Look, we've all been there. <laughs> we've all been there. But what did you do after that? See, here's the difference. See, there's possession receivers, and then there's deep threat receivers. And they both got their little fallacies. Listen up, men. Just follow me. Those of y'all that follow sports. You know, possession receivers and deep threats have, they both have their own fallacy. A possession receiver, tell them, Ramon, a possession receiver, no matter what, he always secures the catch. He'll always secure the catch. But he's only going to run so far. We don't send him deep because he doesn't have the speed. He doesn't want to try to take it to the house. But for this right here, you can, you can dump it to him. He'll catch. You can, you, can, you can depend on him to bring it in those short routes from here to Mary, from here to Star, from here to Trey. He'll catch that. That's good. That's good. Okay, you can handle bills. Good. You can pay stuff on time. That's good. Good. You're faithful. You ain't, sleep, you ain't sleeping around. Okay. Possession receiver. But if he ever tries to turn out of that tackle, because see, the reason that, that the thing that makes him a possession receiver, he can't go nowhere else. He don't have enough speed, Dr. Par or I'm sorry, Dr. Reynolds. He doesn't have enough speed to get away from what's, you know, stand up, Tony. He doesn't have enough speed, so he catches it, but he's done. He's got him. He don't have enough speed to get off that one. You don't have enough speed. You don't have enough word to get off that one setback and keep going. You don't have enough word in you to get off that one setback. One thing didn't go your way, DJ, and you're done. Now you're ready to lay it down. See, that's a fallacy of a possession receiver. He ain't no good after the catch. No yak, yards after catch. You know, when we first start out, see, that's why I'm saying, that, see, that's why I reference Romans 1. You know, I believe it's verse 17 talking about, you know, moving from faith to faith because your wife is expect. okay, we've been here now. I'm expecting us, okay, you know, you know I, didn't, I didn't, you know, you got that one star. Let, 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 what, what about them other three? <laughs> what about them other three? Let's, let's move on now. Okay, so we got this. We got this spot. Now let's start looking at some property. Okay, now that we got the property, now let's start looking at a vacation home. Okay, now that we got the vacation home, let's start trying to open that business. Okay, now that we've got that, let, always trying to expand. <laughs> and don't be mad if she's asking because... Well, I'm, I'm just trying to help you fulfill, because I'm your help meet. I'm just trying to help you fulfill your rank, your status. I met you as a general. I'm just trying, this is what generals do. They try to expand and take over territory. Amen. They try to expand and take over territory. So back to the possession receiver. He can only go to about DJ and catch. That's cool. 
Look, man, you've already proven that you can handle, you've proven yourself faithful as a steward over that. You can pay, okay, you can pay bills. There's no risk in that. You've done that. Good. You can make the car payment. Good. Now, don't get me, don't get me wrong. I'm not down in the possession receiver because that is vital. <laughs> if you can't catch that ball, you need to go back to practice. <laughs> No, let's, hey, hey, let's deal with it. If you, can't if you can't catch that ball, let's go back to practice. You don't need to say, you don't, you don't have no interview comments when ESPN come in, you, and you ain't got nothing to say when ESPN comes in and they walk right past you and they talk to the all pro. You ain't got nothing to say when a blessing comes in to somebody who's willing to take those faith steps. Just, hey, they're at, they're at a spot that I'm not at yet. <laughs> They're at a spot that I'm not at yet. I haven't improved my game. I haven't worked my game enough to get to where they are. But I'm coming. I'm coming. See the possession receiver. You can't count him out. He's just not there yet. Then you got the deep threat. Now the deep threat, all he is, he's all speed. <laughs> he's all speed, boy. He, all he does is run what they call vertical routes. Vertical routes are when you run straight down the field or when you run down the field and to the middle. He's, he's always, the ball, that's when the ball, basically you, you watch the ball go up and he's that guy. All he does is run the deep routes. He runs deep goes. They call them goes or nines, whatever, you, you know, depending on the team you're talking to. And he's good for that. He's, he likes that because he's fast enough. He's fast enough to get off the line. He's got a lot of zeal. He's got a lot of mouth. He's talking big. He's got big dreams, and you know what? To his credit, he's got the balls to step out there and run for it. To his credit. Data, ladies, data, 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 take notes, take notes, data. He's got the balls to go out there and, I mean, he's not, you can't throw away neither one of these receivers. He's got the balls to go out there and try to catch that deep ball. And anybody that knows something about football, those long passes are a very small percentage. You don't complete every long pass. That's why most of the passes are from me to Bo or from me to Tony, you know, all that type of stuff. Every now and then, I'll take a shot back there to Linda. We don't take it a lot. So when he steps out on that big faith move, when he says, you know what, honey, I'm going after this. And then what happens when he drops the ball or he, it's an incomplete? Oh, man, now who is he? <laughs> now we get back to who is he? What was he when he stepped on the field? Is he just a deep? Because, you know, the thing, the only, one of the things that quarterbacks and coaches hate about deep threats, they get tired easy. They get tired easy. I'm good for one long one. <sighs> Here I come, Linda. Oh, I'm waking. I'm believing God for a house. Oh, crap. Dropped it. Okay. Okay. I was believing God for that house. Oh, man. Dang, didn't happen. Okay, oh, we're about to start this business. I'm going, hey, I'm on, I'm on this side. I'm going deep. I'm going deep. Oh, crap. I'm about to, I'm about to burn Nikita. Here it comes. Oh, oh, oh crap. Come on, man. <sighs> oh, dang. I missed that one, too. Now, here's what they start doing. Now they're complaining. Come on, man. Now you'll see them. You'll see them like this. <laughs> it's the quarterback's fault. He threw the ball late. <laughs> Man, this is stupid. Why ain't we throwing more balls to me? Why didn't he get the ball to me sooner? I should be running shorter routes. <sighs> so you discouraged. You tried one thing. Boom, blew up. Didn't happen the way you thought God was going to deliver. You try another thing. Boom, blew up or went wrong. Or you made a mistake. You didn't realize they were playing zone three coverage. So all the, de all the defense is back there where Linda is. They're waiting on you. <laughs> See, the enemy... The enemy knows, or he thinks he knows, what you see. He's watched you for a long time. And he thinks he's got you sized up. He thinks he knows what you're going to do under pressure in this situation. If I press their finances, she'll get depressed and start crying, and he'll crumble because he's feeling bad. If I take their car... He'll break down and be like, oh, man, I ain't a man no more. I might as well stop. And she'll be like, what's going on? See, the enemy thinks he can, he, he's been watching you a long time. You got to know this, man. You got to know this. You got to know this, young cast, because these are the type of blows you will take in a game, in life, in a walk with Christ. You got to know this, Austin. But again, he's not all bad. He, at least he took that chance. But he's tired now. So now when she's like, honey, you remember how you was talking about trying to, uh, trying to branch out and start that business? Well, this opportunity, well, he ain't got the energy now. Well, 
Now he's dragging his feet. Oh, honey, you should call this guy. Remember that job you? Okay, we didn't get that one, but there's another guy in that same field, and he was saying that you were, uh, okay, I'll call him. I'll get in touch with him. I'll get in touch with him. Okay, yep. Now he's dragging his feet. What happened to all that energy? <laughs> what happened to all that energy? Remember, he was running off the, remember, he was, he, he was, ah, he was off the, man, he was off to the races. See, it's best to be a balanced, do-it-all wide receiver. It's best to be the Megatron or the Calvin Johnson in your life. Calvin Johnson can run intermediate. He can run short. He can block. He can run deep. He can do it all. He's versatile based on the situation that shows up, based on the coverage that shows up. He's versatile. Whatever the enemy throws, we'll make adjustments. I'm not just going to hitch my wagon on this one thing, and then if it doesn't work, now I'm breaking down. No, I'm versatile. I'll adjust. I can't run deep yet. I can't run deep. Right. I can't run all the way to Linda right now. Maybe I need to save some money. I can't go to Rome yet. But let me run short routes. Ain't nothing wrong with us going to Chicago here and there. Ain't nothing wrong with us saving and trying to get our play. Ain't nothing wrong with us. Ain't nothing wrong with us having a plan. I adjust based on the coverage that is. I adjust based on the defense. I adjust based on what you got to be versatile, Austin. You got to be versatile, man. We have to be versatile because the enemy thinks he he thinks he knows you, Mary. He thinks he knows that you'll get upset and, you know, because, you know, you, you've been, you, 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 women, you are used to doing it on your own. You know, you've been carrying this family. I've been doing things. I'm not used to no indecisiveness, not realizing that you got a deep runner. You got a deep threat. And he's not used to being stretched over and over and over and over and over again. This is probably the first time that he's went deep more than twice. And you and your, you know, uh, see, I'll take care of it on my own. I don't see, that's what, see, that's, see, that's what, see, see, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. See, I don't see, you know what? I ain't got time for that. I don't raise three. I don't raise three. You know what? You know what? I ain't got, uh-uh, uh-uh. You don't understand that your priest he ain't used to running deep more than once. That's not an excuse for him. He needs to get in shape and he needs to be versatile. But he ain't used to running more than twice down the field and coming back and then having to run more routes. It's one of the things that we're working with Chris on, by the way. So he has to be a versatile man of God and you have to be able to adjust with him. When you see him making these moves, ladies, when you see your brochure, when you see your priest making moves, you know, under the unction of God, whatever, whatever he steps out on, you step right with him immediately. Don't go questioning no plays. Don't go questioning no plays. You ain't that good of a coach. If you was that good, <laughs> you ain't that good. But no, don't go, don't go questioning plays. Well, why are we running that? Well, I remember watching on TV. You was, on, you, you was watching TV. You ain't never done it. You've never been a wife before. Well, I was, well, I'll be watching Crystal and KT, and they look harmonious. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Okay, whatever. Y'all don't, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, so y'all don't look. I'll be watching. See how Lisa always smiling? Ramon always buys her stuff. <laughs> they be having fun on them trips. Oh, okay, so we, again, we just got married, and you play, so we're going so to play the comparison game to me and another priest who, by the way, has been married for a while. Oh, by the way, he's a doctor, so we're going to play the comparison game. So you didn't, wait, 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 whoa, whoa, what happened? So you didn't see the star? Yeah. Okay. Then why are you with me? Why are you, you didn't see the star? So you don't think that I have the potential? You don't know that I can get there? Why are you with me? Why are you with me? If you can't say nothing positive, don't say nothing at all. Wait, why are you with me? Wait a minute, even that's a problem. You mean you can't say nothing at all? <laughs> you can't say nothing at all? Four quarters in a game and you've been quiet this whole game? You ain't got no tidbits of advice? You ain't got no, man, you need some Gatorade? You need some, you know what? Hey, that guy's playing you a little closer. You might want, you ain't got nothing? You ain't got nothing to offer to the game plan of our life? You've got nothing to offer to the game plan of our life? 
You just going for real sit there with your little spoiled self and complain. So this is your time to be taken care of and you're not going to help. This is your, so it's all on me. Don't be getting hot, y'all. So calm, calm, cool y'all butts off. Everybody was like, <laughs> calm down. Take what's for you. Take what's for you. I'm just talking in general. I'm not aiming at anybody. I'm not aiming at anybody. You know, people's abuse. <laughs> you see them looks? <laughs> you ain't got nothing to say? You got a general on your team and you've got nothing to say. I just got rocked in the middle of that ring and you've got nothing to say. Well, I thought, so now you're going to compare. So, you know, if you was with your auntie, you would have never got, we would have never got rocked. You know, if I, I could have been at home with my cousins, I could have been at home with my auntie. We would have never got hit like this. You're right, because nobody would want you. Let's just wear it for what it really is. Since you, can, since you can't see my star, I can't see how anybody would want to be with your ungrateful self. Let's just keep it all the way real. I don't know why I'm going this way. I was not planning on it. I'm just, let's just go all the way there. You know, there's a bit of, un, some, you know, there's a bit of ungratefulness in the house of God. There's a bit of ungratefulness. Some of y'all are not appreciating your priests. Now, I'm not talking about no lazy, I'm sorry, nigga. <laughs> I don't always talk like that. I really don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually an upperly guy. <laughs> some, uh, see, when, when, when you run into situations, when, some, some, when you run into things, when things happen, there's season, there's testing, and then there's reaping. Okay? There's season, there's testing, there's reaping. And you know, sometimes your mouth, you could be reaping for something you said to your priest, about your priest, about somebody else's priest, about somebody else's wife, about somebody, you can, you know, some, some, sometimes some of the things, I'm man enough to stand here and tell you that some of the things that I've been through is because of my mouth. Whatever, look at me, whatever, 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 whatever. I said the wrong thing. I let conversations go too long. I should have shut, hey, 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 shut up. You don't know nothing about that. You don't want that. Okay, switch uniforms then. You go play on that, switch uniforms. The score is 28 zip in the other team's favor. You get on the team with the zero. Put on that uniform then. No, let's keep it real. Put on the team that put on the uniform of the team with the zero and you play the team that's got 28. Then let's see how you like it. People have circumstances. People have problems. We all came in here flawed. Now, that's not an excuse to sit there and lay in whatever you're going through. That's not an excuse. You still need to play the game. Need I remind you, it's 28 zip and it's only halftime. In other words, to, you are young. You're only halfway through your life. You cannot be tapping out and be ready to quit on yourself and quit on your dreams halfway through your lifetime. Can't happen. God gets no glory out of you quitting. God gets no glory out of you quitting on yourself. God gets no glory out of you no longer realizing that you're a general. God gets no glory out of you realizing that you're not, not realizing that you're married to a general. God gets no glory out of you not realizing that you're a queen. God gets no glory out of that. He gets no glory out of quitters. That's why the man of God deals with us so hard when he sees quit on us. God get, that is not edifying to the house of God. I don't know who lied to you. That is not, you quitting on yourself is not edifying to the body of Christ. And it, dra it seeps the spirit out of here. It seeps. So then when you get somebody like Amanda that comes in, who's young, vibrant, pretty, eyes just wide, one to, I'm looking for something, I'm yearning for something real. And here you are sitting next to her with the life sucked out of you because you had a couple of deep routes not go your way. You had a couple of bouts of faith that didn't go the way you wanted them to. And now you are no longer the general. Now you are no longer the, the brigadier general. You're not even what you were when your wife met you. The devil is a lie. It's time out for that. It's time out for that. The devil is a lie. You are still a king. You are still a queen. You are still a general. And you need to walk in it. You need to walk in it when you're broke. 
You need to walk in it when you got money. You need to walk in it when you got tax returns. You need to walk in it if you bounce the check. You need to walk on it if you get fired, if you get laid off, if you get a car repossessed. You need to walk in it. That's what you brought to the kingdom. That's what God gave you. You've got no rights. You've got no business quitting on what God gave you. It offends him when you quit on. So now God's like, so you're calling me a liar. So you're calling me a liar. I said it was good. I said it was good. I said that you will be the head and not the tail. According to Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 1 through 14, I said that you are the head and not the tail. And now you're going to tell me the great I am. You're going to tell me, Jehovah, you're going to tell me that I'm a liar. The creator, you're going to tell the creator I'm a liar. What the hell? You're going to tell me I'm lying after I delivered you, after I healed you, after I cleaned up your messes. When you did run vertical because you ran the wrong route, when you ran the wrong route and we got the ball intercepted and I excused that, I still threw the ball to you. I kept you on the team and now you're going to tell me I'm lying. Now you're going to quit trusting me. Now you're going to stop stepping out on faith. Now, so, okay, so now you come in here and now you're rigid. Now you're rigid. Now you can't open up and praise God. You used to come in here, light your row up. You used to come in here, if it was two people, you didn't care. Now all of a sudden, it had been you and Betty in here. You didn't care. Betty just walking the floor, praising him. Betty praising him from the bottom of her soul. You didn't care. You wanted every bit. You wanted every bit of her prayer in your ear. You wanted her to speak something off of you. You wanted her to get something off of you that you came in carrying and lugging. Now all of a sudden, here you are, Mr. Critical, Miss Critical. Why does the church look like this? Why is that dirty? How long that cobweb been there? Did they know there's a dirt spot there? How come her feet are ugly? Why does she comb her head? <laughs> all that. All that. You used to have no, in, I mean, that stuff didn't even bother you. All you saw were souls like you. You was happy to see people. Why? Because you had your uniform. You knew your rank. <laughs> you knew what you were supposed to do. You know what God commissioned you to do. And you were walking in it. What happened? What happened? Oh, you got hit. It's a cloud of witness against that. It's a whole bunch of people in here got, look around. See? That takes me back to my original point. That's, that goes against you coming in a sanctuary. Close, remember what I said about the battery off by itself? That goes against you coming up in here, closing yourself off up in your aisle or off in your corner or over by yourself, not one to associate, not one to be around saints, not one to plug into the power. And now you're starting to fester a bad attitude. Now you're festering a playground for the enemy to jump up and down on your head. I can talk. I've been there. And if you would actually open your eyes, if you would actually open your eyes and look around, you'll see a whole lot of black eyes in here. You'll see a whole lot of scars and scar tissue on people's elbows and shoulders. People that have fought good fights. People that have fought and been hit, been cut, been stabbed, and yet God still lifted them up. God still delivered. You have no business quitting. You got to praise God. You got no business quitting. No matter how you cut it, you can look around and see. You can see some saints that have been through worse than you. You twisting an ankle, I blew an Achilles. You blew an Achilles, she got cut in the stomach. You got cut in the stomach, she had heart surgery. You had heart surgery, she had cancer. There's always somebody that's been through worse than you. You've got no excuse for taking your rank off. And then you just vex the poor man of God. You come in here so heavy, he's over here spitting, preaching, teaching super hard, teaching nothing but fire, teaching nothing but word and principle, and then he got to leave for like three weeks at a time just to get his mind back together that I'm telling him over and over and over again. And I got like three people listening, everybody else looking like, well... I tried to run Bishop, but there was a defensive back right there and I couldn't catch the ball. So you better know that, ladies, when you pick a priest, can he play? I'm not, 
I'm not talking about he won't run the wrong route. He's going to make mistakes. He's going to make financial mistakes, particularly if he doesn't have a father figure. But see, that's what the word is for. The word is for to correct all of that. And another thing, time out for you jumping on people when they get rebuked. Time out for you jumping on people that get corrected. Don't worry. Stick around. Your time is coming. <laughs> stick around. Stick around, baby. Your time is coming. You're going to be on fire street number nine. Trust me. And you, you know what's going to happen? We ain't going to look at you like that. We've been there. All we're going to do is extend our right hand saying, in the name of Jesus, I know what it's like to lose some money. I know what it's like to be irresponsible. I know what it's like to want to quit. I'm not even going to, I ain't got nothing to say. I ain't got nothing to say. And see, sometimes God will let you go through stuff until you get that off of you. Remember, there's testing, season, and then there's reaping. He'll let you go through that stuff until you get that off of you. He's, got, he's such an awesome God. He's so good. He's so, <laughs> he's so good that he's willing to let you sit there and toil. We learned about that word. He will sit there and let you toil. He ain't let you go, but he will let you toil until you, break, until you shake off every bit of that pride, every bit of that nasty attitude, every bit of that unforgiveness, every bit of that quit, every bit of that want to lay down and die, every bit of that regurgitate. He'll, he'll, he will let you toil until you get that off into you, until something kicks off in you, until that battery kicks off until you say, you know what? I ain't got no business laying down like this. I've had about enough. Of, I'm starting to stink. I'm starting to stink. Baby, we can't lay down like this. God undone. When I met you, you was on fire. And when you met me, I was on fire. We can't. No, nah, baby, we can't lay down like this. Let's go to the sanctuary. Let's go get a word. We cannot lay down like this. We have got to get what God has for us. That's what it's about. That's what you look for in data collection. You look past the exterior. You look past what they look like. You do the eye test. So you do what coaches and evaluators do at the combine, man. They come and they just watch. I want to see how you come out of your breaks. All the stuff that I'm doing to Chris. Everything I'm doing. I watch how Chris comes out of his break. Okay, you're fast, but you're tight. <laughs> okay, so your hips are tight, which means you're going to labor a little bit. So, the, you know, if this hits you, you're off. <laughs> So we got to make sure we got to strengthen that. We got to strengthen your prayer life. We got to strengthen your faith. We got to strengthen your, because you know, if this hits you, you're out. You're off. That's all the man of God is trying to do, y'all. That's all the man of God is trying to do. He's sitting there evaluating. Okay. All right, God. What? Are, okay. Yeah, they're tight there. They're tight in their finances. They're tight in their finances. They're really tight in their prayer life. So they don't really trust you like that. So the minute something big, ooh, something, you know, no, no, no. Hey, hey, hey. Come here, come here, come here. Here's what we're going to do to work on that. Yeah. And here you are, off in your emotions. Why are you always calling me to, why I always got to be the one? Other people are running the wrong routes, you know. I ain't the only one. I know it's us, ain't it? I swear to, other people are wrong. Didn't you see DJ? DJ went the wrong way. He was supposed to go in. He went out. I'm talking to you. I'm telling, I'm talking to you. God is talking to you. That's why. Here's a big mistake, priests. Here's a big mistake. Here's a, here's a, you got to listen to this. Perspective, priests. Because, you know, you may have a wife that has mouth. Now, when I say mouth, I'm not saying that she gets, I'm not saying that she gets up on you and like, yeah, yeah, I ain't talking about that. That's a crazy heifer. Leave her. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about you just have a wife that has a lot of personality. She's got a lot of mouth. Okay, it's kind of the same thing. But the point is, but the point, but the point is, the point is, you got to be able to shut that stuff down. You got to, you got to wear your, hey, hey, you know, the family ain't going under because you can't keep your mouth shut. The family ain't going under because you don't know how to shut up. Hey, what you doing? Get out of, get out of that. Get out of that bit. So leave that alone, babe. Leave that alone. Leave that alone. Those, you ain't got nothing to say about them. Hey, uh, uh, uh. We ain't order. We're going to have enough demons trying to intercept our passes. We don't need no, we don't need to add nothing else. We don't need to add nothing else because we got a problem with this one. Problem with that. We don't need to add nothing else. Shut up. You know, according to Ephesians 5, you know, you, you know, wives, you're supposed to submit yourselves to your husband. According to Ephesians 5, verses 20 through the 25. See? Scripture. You have to be, <laughs> you have to be able to, no, you have to be able to submit yourself. When he tells you to shut up, you need to shut up. 
And I'm not talking about him being a bully, walking around, shut up, Vanessa. I'm talking about when you're about to go out of bounds. Hey, 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 honey, you, you, you know we're going to have to reap that, right? You talked about you. You took that phone call, lasted way too long. Phone call lasted way too long. And I know y'all weren't praying. I know y'all weren't praying. That phone call lasted way too long. Hang up. Hang up. Uh, uh, uh. And you ain't got to be nice about it, man. When your family's on the line, she's about to order up some more drama for you. She's about to order up some persecution in your life. Man, hang that phone up from her. Get off that. Who you texting? Oh, such and such. You would not believe was it? I don't know. You're right. I don't believe what such and such did. I don't even want to hear it. You're right. I don't believe it. I'm not believing nothing. If it happens to me, I'm going to, I'm not going to, I'm so sorry. I'll kick somebody's water over. I'm sorry. I'm not, you're right. I'm not going to believe it. I don't want no part of that. See, that's, see that, that's, that's those gray areas. That's that in-between areas stuff that, that you, you got, that people don't talk about, but you got to, you got to deal with that. We ain't ordering them. I'm sorry. We, we're not ordering up nothing extra. Keep your mouth shut, honey. And you got to be man enough. See, here's the thing. If she don't respect you enough to shut up when you say it, That didn't go over very well at all. If she don't respect you enough to shut up when you say it, it's a problem. It's a problem. How does she look at you? How come that So you mean to tell her, so you mean to tell me you can't tell her to stop? You can't stop her? Priest? You can't, you can't, but you know what? Goes back to how she met you. Did you have on your stripes? Did you have on, did you, what did you have? Did you have, the, did you have the oak leaves? Did you have two bars? Did you have the stripes? Did you have stars? How did she meet you? Or did she try to morph into what she thought you wanted and you try to morph into what she thought you wanted? Did you try to morph your star into a stripe so it can make her comfortable? Did she try to morph her oak leaf cluster into a stripe to make you comfortable? Because you're insecure. Because you can't deal with the fact that you got a queen. Because you can't deal with the fact that you got somebody with high self-esteem. Somebody that's a go-getter. And so any... I, I have to... So your words don't register. Now again, it's not so much the word itself of shut up. It's just you can't stop her when you speak. What happened to it? And if you used to be able to stop her when you speak and now you can't, what happened to the relationship? What happened? Have we taken too many losses without me saying something, honey? Have we taken too many losses without me talking? Have we taken too many losses without me participating actively in this fight, in this game? Have I let you run the wrong route too many times without offering some loving encouragement? Because, you know what, babe, I know you're an all-star. I know you're a general. Here's what I think, honey. Have I let too many games, have I let you go out there on the fight, on the field? Have I let you go out there on the field of battle? Have I let you go on the ring too many times without saying anything? To where now our communication is skewed. We don't talk the way we used to talk. We don't, I don't know why I'm on this, man. We don't talk the way we used to talk. We don't communicate the way we used to communicate. Your words don't mean to me what they used to mean to me. Your words don't mean the same. You got to review that, ladies, because if you're quick to, if, 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 if the wrong, you know, if he's got one, if he's one bad route away from you cussing him out or giving him that, I'm through with you, nigga, look, you got to review why are you talking to him? Are you even ready? Will any, will any and every general that shows up in front of you get that same response? So is it a you problem or a them problem? Is it a you problem or a them problem? Either you don't want to adhere and come down or you don't, even, you don't respect him. And then why are you... We got to review. That's why we, that's why, that's why we do it. It is relationships class, right? That's why we have, you have to do that data. You have to... You got to review. If I don't respect the man's voice, if I don't respect my priest's voice, there is a problem. If I don't respect my perspective, the, the, you know, the prospect, if I, don't if I don't respect the dude that wants to be my priest's voice, there's a problem. There's a problem in his, in his uh, presentation or there's a problem in how I perceive his pres presentation. There's a problem. And we both need God. We both need to be, we need to be asking as many questions as possible. Not just to each other, but to God. God, am I ready for this? Am I ready to take on the responsibility of being a priest? Am I ready to take on the responsibility of getting hit and still having to get up because I got a bunch of little faces looking at me? Am I ready to be that submissive wife? Am I ready to be that wife that's a help me? Am I ready to be his wall? 
Does his voice irritate me if it raises? Can he say, baby, shut up, or, or I'm like, I don't know who you're talking to. Because if it does, all jokes aside, you are, looking, you are trying to morph into something that you are not. That's, and that's why we've had people be hurt. That's why we've had young men and women be hurt because somebody or both tried to morph into something they're not. You tried to fit yourself into what you thought he wanted because you didn't want to be alone anymore. You got tired of being by yourself. You got tired of waiting on God. You know, this wait is just a little bit too long. You know, if I help you a little bit, if I move this in, if I move that in, if I shut this down, maybe it'll line up right. Well, if I say this, if I say that, if I act like this, if I act like I pray, if I say, maybe, you know, I'll just try to turn into real quick. Here, here, here. Make me a general. Give me your, give me your chain. Make me a general. Make me a general. Give, give, me, give me your chain. I, let me, now that I look like a general. <laughs> Until you get hit. Until you get hit. We'll know what you are when you get hit. We'll know what you are when you get hit. Can you handle it, men? Can you handle it? I say you can. I say, the, I say there's no reason. I say you can. I say you came to hear truth tonight. I say you came to hear truth. I say you came to get girded up and get ready for the responsibility of being a priest. Those of us that are already priests, we can handle it. We got this, dog. We got this. They married us because we got it. <laughs> they love us because we got it. And the mistakes... The mistakes only mean something to you. It means nothing to God. You, you get up and learn from it. That does not take you out the game. Now, you do have to learn, but you, cannot keep, you, you, you can't keep making the same mistake over and over again. You do have to learn. <laughs> you do have to realize, okay, that safety is back there. All right. All right. At some point, there has to be some study. <laughs> At some point, you need to hit the film room. At some point, you need to pray. At some point, you've got to crack your Bible open. You've got to have a word for yourself. You've got to have a relationship with God for yourself. For yourself. We cannot go off of my Neek's anointing. Wig needs an anointing of his own. Ramon cannot go off Lisa's anointing. He needs an anointing of his own. Then he enhances the anointing that when him and Lisa join forces, that's an unstoppable couple then. One power source can't be on and the other one off. One power source can't be on and the other one off. You ever try to put, you ever try to plug in some AA batteries and one side, you got both sides turned the same way and the, it doesn't turn on. <laughs> you got to flip one. It has to fit. It has to fit. So tonight, all I would, you know what, I'm, and I'm done. I, I think God is done. <laughs> but I just want to make sure that you understand that what we are fostering here is happy marriages. Marriage is honorable. And the priests lead. Through your mistakes, priest, you still lead. Through your mistakes, you still lead. Don't you quit. Don't you give up because you made a mistake. You're still a general. You're still a general. You're still a man of God. You're still a man of faith. You can still call those things that are not as though they were. I did it today, boy, so I know. I know. Something, something broke today that I was like, look at God, who gave me an opportunity to fix something when I had the wrong attitude. I'm just, hey, whatever. I, I'm not saying that for applause. I'm just being real. When I had the wrong attitude, I got frustrated. See, I can talk. I can, I'm not just up here running my mouth. I can talk because I know what it's like, priests. I know what it's like to be down because something that you, man, you was stacking that thing. And it didn't go the way you wanted. But it's how you bounce back because you can't stay down too long. It's imperative. It's imperative that you beat that standing eight count. It's imperative. You want to be already on your feet before the referee gets to eight. You want to be already on your feet waiting for him to go ahead and check. Yeah, I'm all right. Let me get back in the ring. You know how they do that? How they, he gets knocked down. One, two. You know, you don't want to be the one struggling to get to your feet at nine. You want to be already on your feet bouncing in the corner. Dang, I got caught, but I'm good. I'm not, are you ready? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Right back out there. Right back out there making things happen. Right back out there moving on faith. That's all I have, man. Let's go ahead and...
Let's go ahead and go to the altar. I want my priests encouraged. I want my priests encouraged. I want every man in here.